With me uh, in, the, in the panel are, of course, people you all know. Uh, Doris Peck, the president of the EPP Women. Michael Schneider on my left-hand side. Michael Schneider, I should say, of course, who is the, um, uh, the committee of the regions, uh, representing the community of the regions. And the youngest uh, member of our panel, Konstantinos Kiranakis, who is representing the youth of the EPP. First of all, um, what uh, can we expect, what can the citizens expect uh, realistically from the current Juncker plan? When are we going and how are we going to, to see the, re the results? What can we expect? I start with the youngest in the panel. Thank you. I think too often politicians are uh, talking about, they are trying to make uh, meaningless things sound very meaningful. And I think, quite honestly, the Juncker plan, it's the opposite. It's the, more meaning, it's the most meaningful project that the European economy has seen in the last decade. And I think we need to talk more about it. The start has been made with um, Vice President of the European Commission, Girki Katainen, who has been going all around Europe to talk uh, about the Juncker plan with the citizens. And I think we need to do more about this. I think it's time that we make this meaningful project also sound meaningful. And maybe it doesn't say a lot to the ears of the citizens but it will say a lot for their lives and for job creation that will come in the future. So we need this meaningful project uh, to talk more about it, to explain it, to take the time to explain it to the citizens and see how we can develop even, even more. We're going to address that question of explanation and communications in a short while, but first I want your general statement on, on how you see this working out for the citizens. Well, first of all, I would like to underline that I think this is a very interesting panel, women, young uh, members of the EPP and regions, this is a uh, kind of the future. And uh, to answer your question, I think uh, the investment plan is a clear signal of the Juncker Commission that it wants to fight the big challenges with, adequ with adequate measures. And is, it is, a, it is a, a big concept, it is a bold concept, instead of small scale progressing of small scale, scale uh, 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 measures. And this big concept can bring quick, visible results for the people. And this is the effect on the people. They can soon see what this, uh, what this uh, concept brings, especially in, in creating nets, uh, digital nets, energy nets, and so on. Market, crucial crucial, yeah. crucial uh, challenges of the European Union. Yeah. Ms. Pack, what is your general uh, assessment on, on the effect the Juncker plan will have on I the I think uh, very few people know anything about the Juncker plan first. Therefore, I think uh, we should speak on it, but we should put, uh, how to say, um, meat on this uh, Gerippe in German. I have the impression that the Juncker plan can only be working if the nations are responding. <laughs> the Juncker plan alone is, uh, is nothing. Not it is only something which the, uh, the politicians in the nations are doing something. But I think we should combine very closely the Juncker plan together with the youth guarantee which is the older idea of the European Union, which is not working. I think we should bring this, both ideas together. Both have money, they are money, to give the young people a possibility of participation. It will be possible if we have enough jobs, if we have new factories, then there will be a possibility. But along, we have to wait this business is being installed, but in between we need to help the young generation to get any way of participation. Not everybody can get a job, but there is a possibility of voluntary services and so on and so on. So please keep in mind the youth guarantee has to be linked to this um, Juncker plan and then I think it can really work and then we have something which we can show to the citizens, then they will understand. You said something very important, um, actually, that you don't believe that the citizens really understand and know about the yeah. Juncker plan in the, in the first place. And I, as a media person, I, I tend to agree with you. Coming to you, Mr. Schneider, uh, how do you see, how, how will you be able to communicate? Because there is a clear need of communication since a long time already from the, what we call the Brussels bubble to the citizens of Europe, but specifically now with this Juncker plan that is so crucial for the Union, there is a lot at stake here regarding communications and specifically in the regions, yes, because yes, the yes, regions yes, are of yes, course yes. very close to the citizens. Yes. Indeed, it's a, a crucial question 
uh, for the for the success of the investment plan communication in the in various ways Com communicating means means a lot i very much approve the uh, tour that commissioner kantainen made through european capitals to promote uh, the new investment plan but it is very important not only to take into account the national level uh, the regional, the local level is crucial for the success of this investment plan. And here it's a question of communicating, of giving enough information, communication to, to the regional level, to the local level, that they know what they can do, that they know which uh, funds they can use, that they know which, which plans they can made, make. And there here is an information gap between Brussels is, and indeed, the local... Indeed, governments and the local levels. Indeed, indeed there is, uh, and I use this opportunity to underline this. We need more information for, for technical stuff on, on regional level, and uh, this, this information must be adequate. We don't need hundreds of pa pages of techni technical regulations that people are, uh, are busy to, to read, and they, don't, and they don't find the time to develop concepts and new ideas. This is, a, for me, a crucial question of it communicating. It very concrete. Uh, how yeah. do you see that towards the, the, the younger citizens? They, they, as, as anybody, they are not really into what is really the Juncker plan all about. So can we have specific measures and specific means to reach out to, to younger people? I think the percentage of uh, young people, young Europeans, knowing about the Juncker plan and its effects is very close to zero, uh, to, to be honest. But this, um, this perhaps is not the important thing about the Juncker plan itself. It's about delivering it. And it's about once delivering, explaining to the citizens that this has come as a good project from Europe. As I said before, it's the, mon the most meaningful thing, it's the most positive thing that the European Union has done to its economy in the last decade. Instead of dealing with negative terms like unemployment, we're dealing now with positive ter terms, investment. And investment can lead to more employment. The solution that we as GEP uh, always see um, to, to more employment is to create more employers. And uh, this brings me also uh, to my point about what the Commission has to do in order to bridge that gap. And I think when, since the Youth Guarantee was mentioned, I think the Commission really has to reconsider its position about the Youth Guarantee. Mr. Weber, the president of the EPP Group, said this morning that 1.6 million jobs have been created um, in the last years in Europe, which is a very good thing. Not one of them has been created because of the social program called the Youth Guarantee. They have all been created by good EPP governments that have put in place good reforms and have brought investments from abroad and from the inside the EU in order to create jobs. The Youth Guarantee has been from the beginning, from its design, from its architecture, mm -hmm. a social program. And we need to reconsider. I would, much more, um, I would be much more happy to see the 8 billion euros of the Youth Guarantee be invested in an award to the companies, to the European companies that That's would create more jobs idea. instead of a social program that is not working. We have to admit this, and we said it in the beginning in this panel right here two years ago in, in, in Dublin. In Dublin, I remember. And you remember, and I'm very happy to, uh, to see that we were right. That's a very concrete uh, thing that you're asking from the Commission. What else can we, from, from the specific viewpoint, namely the women, for instance, what else can we ask, you ask, from this commission next to what the Juncker plan is doing or, or foreseeing? What, what are your specific agenda points that you're not seeing addressed as yeah. for yet? We worked in the last year on the question of uh, renewing labor market pattern. This year we worked on the digital agenda and both is very important to give everybody a chance to start its life with working. And therefore, I think the, the Commission and those who are working with the money which is giving with the Juncker plan, they should also try to support uh, startups being your own employer. It's very important. That's what, what uh, Yeah, Tatiana and you said. should support as well the self initiatives. There are so many little in initiatives, especially done by women, that, are, that deserve to be supported. And I think this should be continued. And if you look on the actual discussion on the digital agenda, we have seen in our discussions all over the expert discussions this year how many young girls, how many women are really engaged, especially in the digital agenda. They have really a knowledge which is incredible, and they should be used in the new possibilities. Without them, a lot of things will not happen. And therefore, I think uh, we should focus not only on big 
on big uh, factories, on big industries, we should really look on the small and medium enterprises. And therefore also, I would appeal to everybody that at least in the society, the respect and the estimation for vocational training should be much higher. If I see that in Spain, 50% of youngsters are without jobs, most of them have a diploma. But with this diploma, they cannot do anything. So we should re look a little bit on what we are giving as uh, skills to these young, young people. And I have to say, there is also sometimes a lack between universities and business. Of course. We are not asking business to yes. enter the universities to make the, 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 um, the, the daily, daily work. There's but a gap. There should, be, there should be much more links to give the young people an understanding what is needed, what can be done uh, if they are working, if they are educating this, educated in this or in this. So I think the vocational training is not enough respected and estimated. And this is something which I asked really because a lot of parents, if you speak to them, my daughter, my son must have a baccalaureate. Yes, but it can also be that the baccalaureate comes later, but let them do, if they have a capacity to do something else, let them do it. And they find it out, let me just end with this, with the voluntary service, the European voluntary service or others, which is really a kind, a possibility to give them a chance to understand what do they can for what they are capable, ca capable and I think this should be used. These are offers from the European Union. That's all very interesting. The, these, these two ideas and the idea of Mr. K uh, Kiranakis, it's out of the box. It's thinking out of the box. Do you have anything to add regarding specifically these this, this other agenda points that are maybe not being addressed as far? Yes, I have a very concrete point. Uh, and I also would like to use this audience here, this panel, to, to, say, to speak of it. Uh, I had organized a conference this morning with several hundred participants, especially from Spain, and we gave examples for good investment using European funds in the European regions. We had presidents from Spain, from Slovakia, and from Poland who, who came with their examples, and they all but they all agreed in one point. We could have, mo have much more examples if we would not have this enormous bureaucratic administrative burden. It's a burden for the administration, for the, for the regional administrations, and it's a burden. It's been years. It's a burden for the. It's a burden for the. I'm not ready. It's, and it's, and it's a, a burden for the companies who more and more refuse to, to use European funds. And what, what is most important, we are talking about that since many years, what is most important, the, this burden has grown in the new period that we are in. It has not been diminished, it had, has been increased. And we should use all our forces to fight this obstacle for more investments than we have. There's a lot of brains on this table, ladies and gentlemen. Great ideas from these three people. I suggest that we uh, express our warm appreciation for what they've been saying. Thank you so much, Ms. Pak, Ms. Ke Mr. Kiranakis and uh, Mr. Schneider. Thank you so much, and thank, thank you as well.